Democracy is a fragile thing, more fragile than you want to believe. If the election fails, there is no democracy. I don't have to do anything. You're doing it to yourselves. People are divided. Your voting districts are manipulated. Voting locations are closing so millions can't vote. It's not hard for democracy to collapse. All you have to do is nothing. Thank you, Mr. President. You hit me. President Trump has just walked across the demarcation line that made him the first U.S. president to visit our country. I just want to say that uh, this is my honor. I didn't really expect it. We were in Japan for the G20. We came over and I said, hey, I'm over here. I want to call up Chairman Kim. And we got to meet and uh, stepping across that line was a great honor. A lot of progress has been made. A lot of friendships have been made. And this has been in particular a great friendship. So. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Oh, sorry. So I would invite him right now. To the White House. What a bizarre sight as the North Korean delegation is mobbed like rock stars by reporters in Singapore. Kim Jong-un is taking Singapore by storm. The boy dictator posed for a selfie during a late night sightseeing stroll. It's hard to spot him because he's surrounded by a dozen strapping young men his force of devout bodyguards who form a human shield around him. Here they are jogging in formation alongside his limo. Notice how the 12 men all wear the same black suit and blue and white striped tie. They were all carefully selected. They're all about the same height and they have to be good looking and without blemish. Each one wears a red lapel pin with the image of Kim Jong-un. The entire world is focused on the high stakes summit. CBS, NBC, and ABC have all sent their top people to cover it live. And the excitement here is matched by tension and anxiety. President Trump and Kim Jong-un are staying a half a mile from each other in this prosperous city-state. Kim Jong-un is in the $9,000 per night presidential suite at the St. Regis Hotel. President Trump is at the equally luxurious Shangri-La. Trump is there with his closest aides including Chief of Staff General John Kelly and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders is also there. The president was presented with a birthday cake. He turned 72 on Wednesday. Meanwhile, First Lady Melania is holding down the fort at home. She was the guest of honor at the Ford Theater's annual gala honoring Abraham Lincoln.
지겨워 너무 식상하잖아 내가 놀랄만한 새로운 걸 가져와 아니면 Something that makes me feel so fine. I just wanna tell you, you simply blow my mind. Oh, I've got it. You make me love you more. Living in love with you, living in love with you, living in love with you. I'm just a sucker for you. Hey. Short time. You've never had iced tea like this before. Yeah. <웃음> 이 땅의 풍속에서 살아난 조선인민군 군인의 힘과 지상. 설기와 용맹이 어떤 것인지 만천하에 떨치는 일당백 전투원들입니다. 우리 전투원들은 경애하는 최고 타령관 동지께서 안겨주신 담력과 대장, 천하 무적의 억센 신과 용맹을 더 억세게 표력할 불같은 결의에 충만되어 있습니다. 자, 넘넘하고 믿음직한 모습들이 바로 조국이 자랑하는 우리의 일당백 전투원들입니다. 지금 날아오는 단독 피하기와 막지를 진행하고 있습니다. 난도 높은 여러 가지 격파 동작을 연방 수행하고 있는 우리의 용맹한 전투원들에게 관중들은 열광적인 박수를 보내고 있습니다. 번개 같은 비수가 될 굳은 교리가 가슴마다에 비껴 있습니다. 정보가 울렸습니다. 
전략무기 시험 발사 성공의 기쁨이 발사장에 차고 넘쳤습니다. 경애하는 김정은 동지께서는 껴주신 조국의 손 저서를 For North Korean television viewers, there was little doubt of these soldiers' excitement for their mission and enthusiasm for their leader Kim Jong-un. The newsreader says, we admire the great leader who shows so much love to us and the officers and soldiers who are stationed at our border. It's the sort of propaganda video that North Korean viewers are familiar with, but for the rest of the world, it's a surreal scene. Here's how it unfolded on North Korean television as monitored in Beijing. The North Korean leader arrives at a Yellow Sea Island garrison within clear sight of South Korea. A newsreader says the great leader is unshaken by the strength of the enemy and is not at all nervous to appear so close to the border. Soldiers and their families, the anchor says, are overjoyed to see Kim. They renew their vows to fight against their sworn enemy, the United States, even if it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat. As it shows Kim Jong-un inspecting the island's defenses, the report says the timing of this inspection is crucial, suggesting an imminent attack. That's a message North Koreans are frequently bombarded with. Yet, however improbable an outside attack, North Korea is certainly facing a sea change in relations with its sponsor state China after Beijing went along with tough new UN sanctions. Kim's tour took him to the Yellow Sea Islands of Jiangjie and Mu. The islands are close to the South Korean island of Yeonpyeong, which North Korea shelled three years ago, killing two civilians and two South Korean Marines. No explanation was ever given for the attack, which at the time some feared was the start of an invasion. <laughs> Back to Kim Jong-un's tour, the soldiers, some with their wives clutching babies, wade out into the icy waters to say goodbye. The feelings of admiration are apparently mutual, even though we don't know how much of this was staged. Ram Ram Gopal, CNN. From the powerful younger sister of the North Korean dictator, another belligerent rhetorical attack on the U.S. Quote, the U.S. is a group of gangsters. The U.S. is openly revealing its inveterate hostility toward the DPRK. Those words from Kim Yo-jong, responding to the open concern from the White House over a failed North Korean satellite launch this week. The Supreme Leader's sister reprising her role as the bad cop of the regime. Kim Yo-jong is, is, is to a certain degree the dragon lady for the North Korean regime. And um, I th there's a certain point where we have to think of hers, I think slightly more hawkish than her brother. Kim Yo-jong, believed to be in her mid-30s, has seen her power and influence rise exponentially over the past few years. Analysts say she's a gatekeeper for her brother to North Korean elites, a key advisor on policy, someone he trusts more than just about anyone else. So realistically, she is the second most powerful person in the country. But recently, another prominent female figure has publicly emerged. A young daughter, believed to be named Kim Ju A, thought to be around 9 or 10 years old. We first heard of her existence when former American basketball star Dennis Rodman said he'd held her in his arms as a baby during one of his trips to North Korea about a decade ago. Since November, Kim Ju A has appeared at military parades with her father, at missile launches, and was with him in recent days when he inspected the satellite that the regime just tried to launch. Why has she been rolled out so often recently? Kim Jue happens to be the best secret weapon um, that Pyongyang has right now because Chairman Kim Jong-un has been afraid of losing the world's attention. But beyond the propaganda, analysts say it's possible that Kim could be grooming his young daughter as his heir apparent. It's hard to imagine why he would be doing this unless there was a reason behind it. Now, part of it is he could be trying to show a softer face to the leadership and to the people. But it seems to be more than that. Some analysts say in the future, given the notorious history of palace intrigue in Pyongyang, it's possible that Kim Ju A and Kim Yo Jong could develop a serious rivalry for influence over the supreme leader. I think it's very real possibility. There have been rivalries throughout the, the, the history of the Kim family and North Korea itself. One caveat, South Korean intelligence recently said Kim Jong-un has a son, older than Kim Ju A, not yet seen in public, and there's speculation he could be the successor. 
If there is an older son, why hasn't he been unveiled yet as an heir apparent? Well, analysts say there could be different reasons for that. It could be that Kim Jong-un is waiting until the son goes through more education and training, or it could be that the son is getting passed over for leadership as Kim Jong-un's two older brothers 